Using colors is actually hard, but in this video, I'm gonna make this super, super practical for you. I'm gonna help you understand how to choose color for your web design project. Let's do this. Hey friends, what is up? My name is Ron Sego. Welcome back to Flux, where we teach you how to do amazing design, web design, freelance, and all of that good stuff. And today we're gonna to talk about colors, something that I've struggled with for years. And let me get started by saying that if you're kind of new to design, if you don't feel confident yet, if you're kind of overwhelmed by how do I combine colors together, the one takeaway that I can give you from watching this video before we dive into the practical stuff is this, the less colors you use, the less likely you are to make mistakes. So if you're just starting out, the best tip I can give you is just try to keep it simple. The As I review a lot of people's work, the most common thing I see is that people pretty early on in their career, and they don't really understand how to colors work together and how to fit them together, and I create good color palettes, they try to cram too many colors into their website, and that just creates mistakes. And in order to avoid mistakes, just try to use less color. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do this. Some people think that there's something magical or artistic um, into combining color, and in a sense, there is a bit of taste and, and kind of an eye for that. However, combining colors together and creating palette is actually, in a sense, very technical, mathematical. There are very known relationships between colors that just look good together. And there's a bunch of tools that can help you do that. All right, so let's get started. I'm, I'm gonna use this kind of practice file to recolor this together with you and give you some example. And I'm gonna use this Adobe Color Tool, which is a free tool um, to help me create these palettes. Um, there is a bunch of other free tools, but I'm just gonna use this just to help you understand what's going on. So I have a design here that's without color, and let's try to put some color in it. Now, as I've said, uh, the best thing to do is to start with less color. Now, on the left here, you'll be able to see all of these color harmony rules, and these are very typical kinds of relationship. We're not gonna go into all of them, but the most simple one is called monochromatic, which basically means one color. Mono means one, and so basically there's one color here. You can see right now it's around this purple, but I can basically turn this around uh, and choose a different color um, from this kind of color circle. Let's say I wanna focus around, you know, orange or red or purpley or bluish. And it's just gonna give me different kind of brightness levels or other colors within that same use. So it's all the same color, it's all blue, but just different variations of it. That just means that because it's just one color, it's going to be rather easy and they're gonna be looking good together. Let's, let's actually take them on to our design and see how that looks. And we're just gonna copy these codes, which are called hex code um, in every design software. I'm using Figma for this example, but every design software basically knows you know, how to work with them. Uh, I'm gonna copy three, three colors here, but they're suggesting me like a five color palette. We're just gonna take three here, but um, five is a little bit overwhelming, I find. Now, as a general rule, and we've covered this in another video, when you're applying color, we usually typically try to apply them in, in a 60%, 30%, 10%. That's kind of helps to make sure there, there's a balance between them. So 60 might be something like what you see in the background, 30 might be something like the text or the main illustration, then 10 just like kind of an ascent color. Now, by the way, these are the colors, like the main, monochromatic colors, I can also always and probably should use something like also black and white or grays because that's always also kind of functional, right? We need them. Well, I can't see here white, so let me just stroke that. Okay, so let's try and use this um, and just, yeah, let's just see what happens. So if I uh, put the background in this light blue and then put the color, the all of the text, let's put them in this dark blue, um, and maybe this, maybe actually the button, let's make it white with actual 
um, dark blue text. Okay, let's recolor this illustration. Uh, oh my God, how many shapes we have here? Let me just try and uh, quickly let's make it. See what happens with this bright blue. No, this bright blue doesn't work well here. Uh, we're gonna make this. Maybe for this, we're gonna choose the bright blue. Yeah, this this looks nice. For all of these rectangulars, I'm gonna pick the white. I think. And as you can see, again, this is something that we did in a minute, so you know we might want to play with it. it. Might not be the most amazing palette in the world, but at least it works together, right? At least there's some kind of. Let's see if that works. Maybe we'll choose these ones. Yeah. In a sense, it works. There's harmony between these colors. There's no huge color mistakes here. We've used them in a way that that the. The higher keys are clear, there's enough contrast between the colors, so it works. And this is the most simple thing you can do, just work with a monochromatic color. As you can see, it's, it doesn't not necessarily have to be boring. Just one color plus blacks and white gives you a lot of variations to play with, and the risks of you making a mistake is actually very, very small with this type of palette. Now, if you want to go into a little bit more advanced, like level 2 color, then you'll probably do something like the complementary palette. Now, complementary just means that we have the color, the main color in this case, let's say blue, uh, and then we have the other side, from the other side of the color palette, the contrasting color. And really, like, blue and orange is a very, very typical blue-orangey um, kind, of, kind of a palette uh, that usually works well together. Um, and it, it helps to create this kind of a contrast. So let's try and give this a try. Let's try these colors here. Actually, let's see if we'll use this as a dark background and see how that looks. And we'll take the bright blue as well, or we'll take just these two. Let's see what will happen with these. Let's see how we play around with it. So I'm gonna use this color for this. Uh, for these, I'm actually going to use black or just white in this case. Um, let's see, we'll do this that way. This guy, maybe we'll, you know, we'll make him white as well or black as well. Yeah, we'll do something like this, but we'll only use the Ascent color, the 10% of the design with this kind of like orangey thing. Maybe we can just use it actually for something like the call to action. So just to grab attention to certain areas of my design. Well, I'm not sure if this is best with black or white, but so this is another color palette where we have contrast between the colors. It's complementary. And again, this is still rather simple color palette to make. Another one of the rather simple one is going to call analogous. And analogous just means that it, the colors are the colors right next to the color that you're picking. So if you're picking like a red one or an orange one, you'll have some colors to the, to the pur uh, purplish side and some colors more to the orangey side. And that kind of, it looks in a sense like a gradient. So that usually makes sense. Let's try and see how that works. Let's take this orange, this middle one, and this purple one, and let's see what we can create with these colors. So let's take this one, and let's take the middle one. Middle one, all right, and let's take this pinkish one. Now in this case, Let's try something different. I don't actually want to, don't want to have a colored background. I feel like it's going to be a little bit overwhelming. So I'm going to make a white background. Um, but let's use the person with this, uh, let's say, orangey thing. Let's have all of these. All of these circles, uh, rectangulars, with maybe this color, 
also or maybe this color and these it's actually I don't know if it's contrasted enough to be honest with you not sure how this comes up so you see now that I'm starting to mix up three colors um, which are different and are not actually very contrasted I don't actually know uh, there's it becomes more difficult and to be honest I don't even know that I like what we've created here so let me try a different combination of these colors okay so now there's only like you know the orange and the um, orange and yellowy which aren't very contrasted and we're not making use of this um, this purplish what happens if I use this pur uh, purplish or pinkish for the button mm, I don't know it doesn't work super well in this case what happens if the background is purplish definitely not what happens if the lines are purplish let's see how that will look like well, that can work, but again, this is not amazing. Um, so maybe in this scenario, these colors, I'm not sure how to use them in this case. So as you can see, now that we're moving into multiple colors, this becomes a tiny more difficult. I'm just gonna show you the last one that I wanna explore, which is the triad, which basically means that there's three completely different colors. We have the main one and the two other ones are in, a same, in the same distance from the original color. Now, this is really complex to work with it, and the only reason that you'd wanna use such a diversified color palette, which is going to be, again, challenging to use, is if you really need to convey, you know, vividness, a lot of color, happiness, and something that's super colorful. Remember, not every color, not every project needs to convey this kind of a message. So let's try, let's, see if we can make this project super, super happy and with a bunch of different colors, like yellow, like blue, like... Again, I'm not gonna put, when I'm working with a very, very diverse set of colors, I'm not gonna use something that extreme for the background, but I'm just gonna try and make maybe the illustration area kind of very, um, very colorful. Let's see how that's going to work. Um, at least in these color, we do actually have some contrast versus the last palette. So we can just put these in the blue. All right, so still. Hmm. Contrast is not amazing. Mm -hmm. Huh, I don't know. All right, so I'll be honest with you, this is not really awesome. And at this point, you really need to be pretty good with color to go that way and to create something very, very diversified. But I hope that I've got you to understand what are the difference between the different color harmonies uh, and that how you can use these palette generators to create them and just play around and try to apply them to your design. Remember, if you're like me and you don't feel super, super confident, try to limit the palette that you're using and as you gain confidence and only if your design actually needs uh, ton of color to show something diverse and happy, add more colors to your palette. Hope that was helpful. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for more design content and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.